All right then, so we're moving on nicely and we're managing to get our data onto the screen, which is good. The next thing I wanna do is add the ability for users to create new Ninja records from a web form on the site. And they're gonna do that from the create page. So in this lesson, we'll mainly be fleshing out the web form template for that page, but we'll also be doing a bit of data fetching to grab all the dojos that a new Ninja could possibly belong to. And then we'll be listing those dojos as options in some kind of selection select field within the form so that a user can select which dojo the new ninja should belong to when they create it. So then we're going to be working inside this create view right here which we already have set up and we're going to add a form template to it. Now I thought about this for a while and I decided it's not in yours or my best interest to write this out from scratch this template because it's all just basic HTML stuff. So I've created a template folder up here at the top and I've added this basic web form template to it to add a new Ninja. So if you wanna grab this, remember it's all available from the course files, GitHub repo, and the link to that is down below the video. Anyway, I'm gonna grab all of this template code, copy it, and we're gonna head back to the create view so I can just paste it back in and then we'll quickly walk through it all. So it's really simple. We've got a form tag, but we've not yet hooked up the action or the method. We'll be doing that in the next lesson. Next up, we've got a label and an import for the ninja name, which is required. And also notice we've got a name attribute for the input too. And the value of that is name in this case. So these name attributes are assigned to each input in the form. And they're important because when we handle the post request from the form in the controller later, we'll be using these name values to access the data from each input. Anyway, next we've got the same for the ninja skill, only this time the input type is a number. And then we've got a label and a text area for the ninja bio. And finally, we've got a select field for the dojos so that a user can eventually select a dojo from the list for the ninja to belong to. Inside the select, we've already got a single option, but it's disabled. And that option is just to tell the user that they can select a dojo from this dropdown. There's also a submit button at the end to submit the form. Under that, we've got a little comment for some validation errors, but we'll be talking about those in a future lesson, not this one. So then, that's the form in full. Let's quickly try previewing this in the browser. All right, so there we go, that looks okay. And you can see we've got a field for the name, the skill, the biography, and also a drop down to select a dojo, awesome. Okay, so next up then, I wanna be able to populate this select field with all the different options for dojos. Now, it makes no sense to manually look up all the dojo names and IDs myself and then hard code them here because that would take a long time. And also, who's to say those dojos won't change in the future? So instead, we're gonna fetch the dojos from inside the create controller function, and then we'll pass those dojos into the view. Inside the view, and in particular inside the select box, we can then loop through those dojos and output an option tag for each one. So then let's head to the create function in the Ninja controller to do this. And inside there, we need to, first of all, fetch the dojos, and for that, we need to come to the top of the file, and we need to use that dojo model namespace. So we can say use and then app backslash models backslash dojo. All right then, so now back down in the function, we can say dollar sign dojos is equal to the dojo class. And then we're gonna use a method called all and invoke it. Now this method does what it says on the tin, it queries the table for all the dojo records, not in any particular order. So then we can just pass those into the view by adding the second argument down here, which is an array. And then we can supply the key name of dojos and we're gonna assign that the value of dojos, which we just created up here. Awesome. So now we have access to a dojos variable in the create view, which is a collection of all the dojos. So let's head back over there and use it to output all those different options. So then, down inside the select tag below the first option, I'm gonna use the at for each directive. And I'm also gonna close that for each loop down here by saying at end for each. So then after for each up here, we can add parentheses and inside that we can say dollar sign dojos as dojo. And now we're looping through the dojos collection and referring to each one as this dojo variable. All right, so for each one, we wanna output an option tag. So let's create that. 
And then inside the option tag, we want to output the dojo name, which we can do by using double curly braces, then saying dollar sign dojo and using the name property on that. All right, and then finally, we need to add a unique value for each option, which is going to be the dojo ID. So let's add the value attribute. And then inside that, we can say double curly braces and then reference the dojo ID property on the dojo. Right then. So that's pretty much done for now. So we're looping through all the dojos and we're adding an option tag for each one inside the select box so that a user can select a dojo for the ninja they're creating. And as a value for each option, we use the dojo ID because that's unique and the identifier for each dojo, right? So that's the value we'll be accessing in the post request handler later on when we submit this form so we can add it to the ninja record in the dojo ID column. Anyway, let's see if this all works. All right, so now in the browser, if we try to select a dojo, I've got my fingers crossed here. When we select this, we should see a list of all the dojos available, which we do. Awesome. So then there's just one more thing I want to add to this form right at the top before we move on, and that is the blade directive called at CSRF. And this stands for cross site request forgery, which is a type of attack where a malicious website could try to make a request to an application on your behalf if you're logged in, and that could lead to some potential security issues for your account. So I don't want this to be a huge lesson about cross-site attacks, but I do want to mention that we should be adding this directive at CSRF to any web forms we create. And when we do that, Laravel ensures the integrity of the form and the request to the server when it's submitted by adding a hidden input with a special unique CSRF token attached to it, okay? And that token, when the form gets submitted, tells the server that the request came from our site and not some malicious one somewhere else. So then, that's the web form pretty much done for now. And in the next lesson, we'll be handling the post requests from this form inside the Ninja controller.